Well, it's without question the engineering marvel of the age, the Starship rocket, millions of pounds of thrust generated in necessary in order to escape the almost irresistible pull of red tape, bureaucracy, spitefulness, meanness, and overall general pettiness on the part of the government of the United States of America. Hi, everybody. I'm Bill Whittle here with Steve Green and Scott Ott. You'll be pleased to know that the uh, fifth flight test of, of uh SpaceX's uh, Starship, the one where they're going to attempt to catch the booster, because if you can land the booster on the launch pad, you can send them up an awful lot faster. Well, we've all been looking forward to that, and we were expecting a launch date probably in early August, maybe late July, early August, which then got stretched to uh, maybe end of August, then we're looking at early September, and then middle of Mm. September, and now we find out, no, we're not launching in September, and we're not launching in October. We will not be launching Starship until November. What is the monumental challenge that is keeping Elon Musk and this record-breaking, mind-boggling technology on Earth? Well, it's political red tape. They can't get their launch license. And Steve Green, if you want to tell me that Elon Musk coming out as a large supporter of Donald Trump, an enthusiastic supporter of Donald Trump, a man who's going to contribute to Donald Trump's campaign, if you want to tell me that this has nothing to do with this punitive, spiteful, ridiculous, insignificant, absolutely inconsequential, impertinent, irrelevant grounding of the space of the spaceship, uh, starship launch, then I got a bridge I want to sell you. And, um, and it's, and it's, it just, it, it, I, I'm just so bloody angry. I just don't know what to say. Yeah. Uh, let me, let me, let me, for the folks who are maybe new to the whole starship thing, let me tell you what the stakes are because they are huge. So what Starship promises to do is to reduce the cost of a launch uh, into into low Earth orbit to $2 million. Uh, Currently, the cheapest one you can buy is on uh, SpaceX's Falcon 9, which costs about $60 million. But it's actually a much bigger savings than that because Starship is so huge and can lift so much more mass uh, and not just mass, but volume, which is a huge consideration. You can take you can take big things up there, not just not just heavy things. Yes. Uh, the cost reduction, if they get it down to the $2 million, is two orders of magnitude. It's a 99% savings. But even if Musk is off by a full order of magnitude, Starship would still be a 90% cost savings over Falcon 9, which is currently the cheapest way to get stuff into orbit. This is a game changer. Stuff we didn't even dream of because either you couldn't make it small enough or you couldn't make it light enough or you couldn't pony up the money all becomes possible if Starship delivers as promised. And as uh, I think Musk himself said about SpaceX, they turn the impossible into the merely late. And it's the late thing that's really starting to, to grind here because, as SpaceX said in their, uh, in their public letter late last week when they had to announce that they wouldn't be allowed to launch until November, it now takes more time for the FAA to complete the paperwork on one of these flight tests than it takes SpaceX to prepare the rocket, and it isn't even Hmm. close. And you look at the history of these flight tests, there have been four of them so far, each one has progressed further along in in what Starship is supposed to do. And this fifth test flight, I mean, their goals were so low on the on the first one uh, a couple of years ago now that Musk said, "Look, Just if it clears the pad, yeah, if yeah. it clears the pad, we're happy." And it and it did so much more than that. In fact, we we live streamed it here, and we did. It was so much fun. People got a great kick out of that. Um, and then the the three flights that followed, each one made it further and further along. And I haven't cheered at anything I watched on TV since I was a kid. Like I cheered for Flappy on that. On that fourth flight test, just hang that, on, yeah, flappy. flappy. Yeah, I did a show on that. <laughs> that, that was, was awesome. it was just America's America's newest hero. It was amazing. <laughs> and what flight test five plans to do is not just uh, uh, safely land the uh, or safely return the second stage, and I don't think that's ever been done before, uh, but nope. safely return the first stage to a landing pad. Uh, using the Mechazilla or chopstick arms. And mm-hmm. Those arms don't so much catch the returning first stage as they, it, as they sort of guide it down yeah. exactly into position. I, I wouldn't want to try and catch a rocket. Um, so this is very exciting, the, the, the milestones that are supposed to be hit in Flight Test 5. And the FAA, the Biden-Harris FAA, has rigged it 
There's no other there's no other word for it. They have rigged it so that flight test 5 will not take place until after election day. That hmm. Elon Musk won't get his big win which is a win for humanity, by the way, and that's no exaggeration. That's my entire point. That's my entire point. Yes. Until after Election yes. Day, because these people are petty, they are dangerous, and they will sell out your future and humanity's future just to eke out one more damn election win on their road to bankrupting the country. That's exactly right. It's not just about America. It's not just about Republicans. It's about the entire future of the species. Is These people are, are, are tying spaceship to the ground with 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 just mountains of red tape. They're just stapling it onto the side of the booster and hammering stakes into the ground and daring him to basically go and do this because, because of his political support of Donald Trump. There's no question about it, none. Scott, um, I'm, I'm sorry to say that the great state of Texas uh, had a hand in some of these delays. The, um, the uh, Texas version of the EPA basically said that um, the water that they use, which I always thought the water up until, you know, fairly recently, if maybe 40 years ago, uh, I always thought that the water was there to cool the pad. What the water is really there for is to suppress the sound. It's the, the sound mm. will shake, will shake the foundations of just the sh air pressure will shake the foundations to the, to the launching pad into pieces. And so just like the Saturn V launch pad and so on, like all launch pads, there's a cascade of water that happens. The shuttle had it as well to dampen the sound. Well, SpaceX had this cascade of water. The cascade of water rolled off the pad, rolled off into the wetlands, and uh, the Texas Environmental Agency or whatever slapped SpaceX with a fine for $3,400 and some dollars, which I'm imagining Elon could probably manage to pay, but delayed the progress again because they said that they were dumping industrial wastewater into the environment because it had touched the launch pad. Musk immediately tweeted, just so everybody's aware of what's going on here, this was potable water. You could drink it. I would be happy to drink it. But this is, but this is what governments do. This is what little people with little minds do when they see great people with great minds doing great things. This well, is the DMV of, of, of the 21st century. Well, first of all, I think we need to present the other side more fully here, Bill. Uh, first of all, that water that is going out into the wetlands is filled with really loud noises. And so <laughs> oh. when it gets into the wetlands, who knows what kind of critters could be startled by that. Uh, so, so you're saying the, the mosquitoes could... The mosquitoes could then sort of uptake the loud water, and yes. then they'd all have like buzzing the sides of sounds they'd, of like like foghorns. They sound like Apache helicopters. Yeah. Oh dear God, I and hadn't so, considered that at all. Thank so, God we have a government to protect us. And, and then uh, just as a as a uh, uh, an immigrant to Texas, I need to clarify something here. Um, the great state of Texas isn't doing this. Austin is doing this. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So anybody who lives I'm in with Texas. You, brother realizes that that's a whole different area <laughs> from I the state. I fully understand. It's same as, with Washington. As former Governor Rick Perry used to say, it's the uh, Austin is the blueberry in the bowl of tomato soup. <laughs> so um, that, and it, it's funny because you got like Boeing and NASA who are getting ready to launch and have to keep going, wait, 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 uh, something went wrong, we're not ready, we're not ready. Meanwhile, um, SpaceX is champing at the bit saying, go, 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 we're ready to go. And the federal government is going, no, 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 wait, 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 we still have bureaucrats doing important work here and we can't, we can't let you go yet. And it was just a week or so ago that I was watching a SpaceX capsule with its nose cone open into the vacuum of space and private citizens doing calisthenics outside of the spaceship um, in an unprecedented experiment of private space flight in a brand new capsule with brand new spacesuits that had never been used before for these purposes, doing this amazing thing further away from Earth than anybody's been since the lunar missions that took men to the moon. And, and somehow um, we, have to, we have to trust that the federal government has our, our best interests at heart. Um, I read a book a while back, I can't remember the name of it now, but it was all about the development of the lunar module, the little dune buggy that they rode around on the you surface the of the moon. The rover. River. Yeah. yeah, and um, so this, this little uh, car that they had to build up there, the constant 
driving uh, narrative of the engineering team was we've got to make it lighter. It's got to be lighter. It's got to be lighter. It's got to be lighter yeah. because you could take almost no weight <laughs> into space. In fact, mm -hmm. the actual lunar rover was so light that you can't even set it on the ground on Earth. Like you, yeah, it, it collapsed under its own weight. It can't support its own weight on Earth. Only in one sixth Earth gravity can it possibly be used, or even or even sit on the ground. So the idea that you can now take not only uh, mass but but size but volume into space is a huge game changer when it comes to space exploration to to just orbital. Uh, space work where you're just, you know, building things in Earth orbit to be able to to do scientific experiments or to do industrial processes that wouldn't be possible on Earth. All of this, you would think that a government whose job it is to promote commerce, in a sense, would be bending over backwards and moving mountains to make sure that this process doesn't get delayed. We say that we're afraid that our communist enemies are going to overtake us in technology and we're throwing on the brakes for something like this. You know, what's funny about our communist enemies is that the one thing that our communist enemies have always done better than us is bureaucracies. That's why they have five-year plans. That's why you have to wait in line for four days in order to get a permit to get the permission to go to the place you need to get another permit in order to file the application for the document that you need in order to apply for what you're trying to get. Um, this is what bureaucracies do. The, the government has, has basically been in the spaceflight business from the beginning of American spaceflight. And in the beginning, we had a young leader with a we had a, a young nation coming out of World War II, not only victorious but spectacularly victorious, convinced that we could do anything. Not because it was easy, but because it was hard. And the government of the 1960s was dedicated to the purpose of giving the American people what they wanted, which was actual progress and getting us on the moon. That was 50 years ago. And over the last half century, the, pro the job of the government now is to prevent people from getting into space. The job of the government is to prevent inv innovation. The job of the government is to prevent us from going higher, faster, and further. The job of the government is to prevent supersonic flight without the sonic boom. The job of the government is to prevent us from driving the cars we want. The job of the government is to make sure that we are absolutely 100% bound to our rails and our, and our hive-like cities eating our sustainable algae cake <laughs> and and saving the planet uh, and 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 making donations for the Guatemalan water snake and all the rest of these things while the people that actually run the government jet around in private jets and and, and spend four hundred dollar dinners at the French Laundry while the COVID pandemic is going on and I go on and on and on and on and on. The government programs for spaceflight do not work. You saw, as Scott pointed out, a, a functional capsule at a super high apogee with a private spacewalk with, with a spacesuit that looks like it's from the 21st century. And then you also saw just a few weeks ago the government version of the, uh, of the launch program, the, the heavily subsidized Boeing Starliner, get ejected as ballast so that you could put a real spaceship on that very valuable docking port. You saw the space launch system that went to uh, around the moon in Artemis. What was that now? Nine years ago? Two or three, right? 2022, three years ago, I think. Four, I think. Tw so two years ago. They may go again someday. Yeah. They are having problems with that launch system too. So we have a company that's doing everything that's working. We have other small companies that are trying to do what this company is doing. They're working. They're succeeding. And the job of the government is to make sure that Americans do not progress, do not prosper, do not become wealthy, do not become independent, do not become self-sufficient, do not become any of these things because if they do they start to vote republican and now you know why we're not flying spaceship flight five until november and we're going to miss the launch window elon musk said just before this grounding happened he said in 2026 we are we had a launch window to mars every two years because of the relative positions of the two orbits in 2026 we're going to send starships not to orbit not to the moon we're sending starships to mars in 2026 we're going to try and land them on mars and if we succeed we're going to mars in 2028 before the decade is out to take men and take them to the to the surface of Mars and presumably return them safely to Earth. If John Kennedy, the liberal saint of the Democratic Party, were alive today, he would burn the Democratic Party down by matches with his own hands, and he'd be getting an awful lot of help from people like you and me and Stephen Scott and all the rest of us out here. I'm absolutely, unbelievably furious about this and the pettiness of it, the sheer small-minded, little 
bureaucratic fiefdom pettiness of it is all you need to know about this government. So remember, folks, whatever happens in November, the government is not the country. Have that written down on your Man. mirror in the morning when you shave. As matter as things get worse and worse and worse, the government is not the country. The country is in very good shape. The government is a bucket of bolts that needs to be cast into into space, re-enter the Earth's atmosphere, take the ashes, bury them in cement, mix them up, chop them into small pieces, <laughs> ditch them into the Marianas Trench, and pray for the best after that. For Steve Green and Scott Ott, I'm Bill Whittle. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time right here on Right Angle. <laughs>